All right, welcome in. So today I got something a little special, something a little bit different. I'm gonna show you how I customize one of the, my figures. I'm gonna take a really, really cheap, inexpensive, very common Star Wars action figure. And it's the Captain Kazian figure from the Star Wars Black Series line. And it's the one he's in all his snow gear. Well, I have just uh, released a new kit that you can actually purchase. It's just a head. Uh, it's an alien head. And I'm gonna take that alien. I'm gonna put it on to this figure. I'm gonna customize him up make them look a little more cooler. So what I have here is the body that I'm gonna be using. I've taken off the head uh, of the figure and I'm gonna replace it with this cool like alien head. And I'm gonna add some weathering to him, his figure, make him look even cooler. So that is what we're gonna do right now. And I'm gonna show you some of the supplies that I'm gonna be using and some tips and tricks maybe to help you guys get going. I'm sure you may know some stuff, but you always wanna watch the things that you think you know, because you always learn something new. So hopefully today is that case. So this is the setup that I've got right now. Now you may notice some tape laid out on top of this cutting mat. Well, I actually use this to pour paint onto it. I'll pour little dabs here and there. And then when I'm done, I can just take the tape, peel it off and throw it away and limits the amount of mess there will be for cleanup. Now for my paintbrushes, I don't actually use anything that fancy. I kind of use some inexpensive type stuff. I just picked these up at Target, actually. I think they're like eight bucks. Got a whole slew of them over here. So you got quite the selection and they seem to be working pretty good. I've only used them a couple of times and so far, so good. I've used some really, really cheap and expensive ones before and they get the hairs that fly off of them and just get into the paint, get onto your figure and it's just garbage, it's horrible. Ugh. These... I'm happy to report they actually don't do that. So these are, like I said, from Target and the brand is Handmade Modern. They're pretty decent. Now, I'm gonna be using two different types of paints for this. So for the head, I'm gonna be painting it with these colors right here, black and white. What? Mix those together, you get gray. Well, these are Model Color and by Vallejo. I love this paint. I've had great experience, great success with this and yeah, I got no complaints, but you can use whatever you want. This is just the stuff that I choose to use. So I'm going to be weathering him up, so I'm going to be doing what's called paint washing. And that's literally just kind of dirtying him up, getting him all greasy looking. This adds weathering. looks really cool. So I typically use this. I use black Vallejo model color, typically. But I don't want to use this up that much because at the date of this recording, I'm still under lockdown here from the virus pandemic. So I want to be very cautious and cost efficient in everything that I do with don't want to waste some of my good good stuff so what I will be using is something a little bit unique I used it once before already with good success it's this stuff I got this at Fred Meyer and I'm using this for my washes and seeing how it turns out I think it'll do pretty good it's a AA art advantage it was I can't remember how much this was I think it was like five bucks and that is it other than I got right here is just water straight up water I like to use revenue alcohol for my paint cleanups, so for my brushes. However, we're still in this pandemic and uh, rubbing alcohol is pretty much uh, an impossible th thing to get. I have some left over, but I'm saving that for my 3D printing stuff because uh, you, you utilize that quite a bit for 3D printing with resin and I don't want to waste it for, for paint. So water in this situation will do. Almost forgot, paper towels. Now these are just the automotive ones. They're a little bit thicker, so they got a little bit more absorption so i like to use this stuff for when i use paints i guess this is a optional thing that i do as well i like to wear gloves and again we're in the pandemic so gloves are hard to come by right now so i've been reusing them as much as i possibly can and i just noticed this actually has a hole in it so this one it actually won't work it's garbage so i will have to bust out some new ones all right so first things first uh what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up some gray Let's do that. Oh, almost forgot again. Another thing I like to use is toothpicks uh, for mixing the paints and also getting into some small areas. This works really well. All right, let's mix up some gray. And since black is a more stronger color, it's more powerful, I like to use white and then add just a drop of black, bloop, and that should give me gray. Yeah, since black is more of a dominant color, you don't only need a little bit of that with the white color and boom, you got gray. If I were to do it the other way around, it would take a lot more white to mix into that black to get gray. I like to use back and forth motions like that and just kind of use the tip of it and just go doo -doo -doo -doo, back and forth. It puts on a nice even coat. And you wanna make sure you don't leave any gloops on there 
like that. You want to make sure it's completely spread out. That's why I like to do this back and forth motion like this. It really spreads it out thin. Just like that. So, the, so there's no like high areas left on it to where it's going to look uneven. Another thing I like about this paint, it dries pretty quickly. So you don't have to sit there and wait before in between each coat you want to do. It, it dries pretty quick, especially if you get it on thin enough. It's definitely going to dry really fast. So you can paint this up and have it dry within a couple of minutes. That's looking pretty good. Cool thing about this is there's only going to be a little bit more color added to the eyes. And then once it's dry completely, I'm going to go ahead and do a wash on it. And it's done. It's a super fast one. Super, super quick. Now, you could actually uh, use an airbrush on this and it would be really, actually a lot better if you want. You can use a paintbrush, but you can also use a toothpick. So you put, you dab a little paint on it and you can just go to town, just right up in there. But I have a paintbrush that's pretty pointed and works pretty well for a small detail. So I'm going to use a paintbrush, but normally if I didn't have this, I would definitely be using a tooth toothpick. The cool thing is it doesn't have to be that perfect because I'm going to do a light weathering over him so it'll hide some of the imperfections. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. One down, one to go. There we go. I'm sure you know what this is, but for the people that don't know what this term is and what it means is I, what I'm about to do for this step is called paint washing. Now you might think, oh, we do go clean it in the sink. It's actually the reverse of what you think. You're dirtying it up. You're getting at the opposite of wash. Definitely going to be dirty, not clean. So it's the mildew, the, the grime, the dirt, the dust, all of that stuff is what you want to bring out in the detail of your figure. So I take a grays and blacks and, and some browns and kind of make your own like nasty color. And you just slosh that baby all or lather it up. And then you wipe everything off as you possibly can to where it's clean again. And then you're left with what's in the crevices, the details, the cracks, you're adding contrast to your figure and plus this makes it look a little more cooler more authentic more like he's battle worn in the dirt and battlefield all that good stuff but before i get to that i still have to paint his neck i totally forgot about that okay now we're ready to do some weathering and some paint wash on this guy here we go i'm going to start off with some of this Acrylic Burnt Umber, the uh, Art Advantage. A little dollop. And then I'm going to grab a kind of a thicker brush. Just a little bit on the paintbrush. And now I'm going to try and get off almost all of it. And I'm just going to go like this. Like that. There's hardly any on the, the brush. Now I'm going to come over to the, some of the deeper areas here. And just kind of push the brush into it. See? So now it's a little dirty. You're like, oh, it looks like crap, Chris. Well, you just wait. Take another paper towel and I'm going to wipe it off. Just get it a little wet and it should just wipe off. So look at that. It just wiped off. But it's still in the recessed areas. So now it's super subtle. And on camera, it might be difficult to see, but it has some definition now. Looks more, a little more natural. So I'm going to continue on. And you can go thicker too if you want. Just really just, just lather it up and just kind of go crazy with it. So you kind of want to tell a story when you're painting. So you want to get the areas that would kind of have more heavy wear, such as the hands and the glove area. And then down by the feet, that would have a lot of mud and grime and dirt because, you know, it's always touching the ground. And maybe the bottom edges of the coat. Imagine if he was like kneeling down, standing up inside of the, you know, dirt, grime, all of that. So that might have a lot more heavy wear. You don't want to just kind of go over the whole thing and wipe it clean. Oh, we're weathered. Yes and no. I mean, that's technically the technique of doing it. But again, tell a story. Where is Where would it make logical sense to have that much dirt and grime? That's what you got to put yourself in the mindset of. Here's the before. Here's the after. So here's a little extra tip. Use brushes that are already kind of at their lifespan, basically when they're pretty much done. 
uh, because weathering and dry brushing and making this, you know, all paint washed, it damages your brushes. So use something that's already kind of ruined. basically done I'm calling it done on that and here's here's something a little interesting I uh, <laughs> I actually screwed up the hole so when I was drilling it I went a little too deep and too wide and screwed it up so it still goes on and I can make a cool display out of it as you can see there uh, but what I'm gonna try something I've never done before so we'll see if it works out but I have this scotch removable putty type stuff you put on the wall so I thought about taking this and stuffing the hole of the head and then sticking it on and then kind of working it back and forth and see if maybe that might help. I don't know. Let's find out. It kind of works. I mean, I can still move it. It's It kind of works. Since this is just going to be on my shelf anyway, so I, I'm i calling this a, a win. I'm going to add a little bit more and see what happens. But, damn, this figure is looking really, really cool. Boom. That looks cool. Now for some hero shots. Well, hello there. Fancy finding you here. So I had to leave town uh, and I thought I was able to finish this video before I left, but I'm having to finish it right, <laughs> right now on the road. Uh, yeah, so that's, I don't even know if you can see, I can't even see the screen right now, but that's my home for the next few weeks. Yeah, I'm in Phoenix and I'm going to Yuma, and then San Diego, then San Francisco, then home. Oh, it's gonna be crazy. But if you guys wanna pick up one of these aliens for yourself, there's a link in the description below for you to grab. So be sure to check out that. And if you wanna see more content like this, consider subscribing. I would really, really appreciate it because I got a lot more fun things coming your way if you're into this sort of thing, you know? Which if we've gotten this far, and you've seen this part of the video, you're probably into this sort of thing. And I actually got a sneak peek at something that if you are interested in, I'm gonna show you right now that's coming soon. Check it out. Yeah, that's all you get to see. Something fun is coming your way very soon. Can't wait to share that with y'all. Oh, and I haven't mentioned these are kits that you can buy to make your own figures. I'm not selling completed figures as of right now, so they're just kits if I haven't mentioned that already. I'm gonna go in right now and take this footage, edit it, and get it uploaded. Hopefully it works. I'm at an RV park. Internet's probably not the greatest, but let's find out. See ya in the next video.